Well, hello everybody, Russ Barkley here with another short video related to ADHD. But before we get started, an apology, I forgot to give you a dad joke on my Saturday research review. So here it is. What kind of shrub sneaks up on you? Think about it. An ambush. <laughs> That is just so sick. Okay, well, uh, good. Oh, by the way, if you recognize the shirt, you know that I'm off to the gym after I record this. Uh, so I got got to stay in shape for you guys for sure. Uh, finally, I discovered a new bumper sticker for my car, and I thought you might appreciate seeing it. Uh, here it is. I think it expresses my sentiments very well. Counting to ten only makes it premeditated. Awesome, huh? Okay, well, let's get started. Today, I want to talk very briefly uh, about an issue that occasionally comes up when I speak with people about ADHD, and that is why do so many other disorders often coexist with ADHD? We know this as comorbidity. So let's tee up our PowerPoint, as always. Notice the tee up metaphor. I am a golfer, of course. Uh, and let's have a look at what might be going on here. First of all, we know that about 80% or more of people referred to clinics diagnosed with ADHD have a second disorder and about 50% have a third disorder. Uh, and that is true of children and of adults. And here's a variety of the disorders that occur with a higher rate of probability than one would expect by chance, meaning based on the base rate of the other disorder in the population. For instance, over 65% or more of ADHD children go on to develop oppositional defiant disorder. That's a very high comorbidity in kids. In adults, we know that anywhere from 35 to 50% or more will eventually develop an anxiety disorder along with their ADHD and so on. So as you look around this slide, you can see that there are many disorders that link up with ADHD, including, by the way, other developmental disorders like the specific learning disabilities, 25 to 50% risk there, Developmental coordination disorder, another 50% plus risk there, and language and communication disorders, about a 25 to 30% risk there. Notice autism spectrum disorder down here as well. So let's come back to the question I asked at the opening. Why? What would lead these disorders to coexist with each other so often? Well, one answer came about five years to six years ago in a study published by the Brainstorm Consortium that looked at the genetics and the genetic relationships among various mental disorders in over 200,000 people. And what they were able to do was to compute the strength of the genetic overlap between disorders. Here you can see ADHD right at the top. That's very helpful for our purposes today. Now, to read this particular diagram, what you need to understand is that the depth of color, the strength of the color of the line, as you'll see here, reflects the strength of the genetic correlation. So the darker these colors, the stronger the relationship. Now, the thickness of the line reflects how uh, statistically significant this relationship is. So wide lines indicate a very strong relationship uh, and a very significant relationship statistically between disorders. Okay, let's take a quick look then. And what, what are we seeing here? We seeing that we're seeing that there are shared genetics across various disorders. Schizophrenia, for instance, as the authors note, has strong relationships with many other mental disorders. The strongest, as you see here, being with bipolar disorder. That makes sense. Uh, the mania and other act, uh, activities or symptoms of bipolar disorder uh, very much are related to schizophrenia and vice versa. There are thought disorders linked with mania as well. Notice that there's a nice wide line between schizophrenia and autism. Both autism and bipolar disorder were at one time in their history thought to simply be variants of schizophrenia until they were broken away and viewed as distinct but related disorders in their 
own right. So looking at ADHD, what are we seeing? We're seeing a strong relationship between ADHD and depressive disorders. No surprise there. We've seen that in many other studies as well. Uh, and we know that anywhere from 25 to 40 percent of people with ADHD by adulthood have some degree of depressive disorder, more commonly dysthymia, but major depression can also develop there as well. Notice that there's a thinner line, but still a strong line between anxiety and ADHD, going along with what I said earlier, that by adulthood, many people with ADHD, up to half of them, in fact, may well have developed an anxiety disorder. Uh, let me point out one other thing here, by the way. Notice the line between ADHD and anorexia is a negative color. It's a thin line, so it's not very strong, but it's negative, meaning that the genetics for one actually are protective of getting the other disorder you're less likely than other people to get the other disorder. That makes sense. Anorexia, which is also, as you see, are strongly associated with obsessive compulsive disorder, both disorders are related to the trait of perfectionism, of neuroticism, and of anxiety, but particularly perfectionistic behavior. Uh, and so, no surprise that they would be negative rela related to ADHD, which is hardly a perfectionistic disorder, quite the opposite. It's a rather prone, or disorder prone to, as you know, chaos and, and unregulated behavior, uh, impulsiveness in particular. Now, notice they didn't show their link to bulimia. As I've said in other broadcasts here on this channel, uh, ADHD is related to impulsive and binge eating disorders and pathology, and specifically to bulimia. But that's not shown here. The relationship to anorexia, as I said, is negative. So uh, to sum it up then, one reason that ADHD so often coexists with a second or third disorder is that the underlying genetics are shared genetics. Genes that predispose to one type of disorder may also predispose you to have a second and related disorder. Uh, or, in the case of anorexia, as I've said, may be protective of getting that other disorder. That doesn't mean that genes explain everything. They certainly don't. Uh, for instance, we know that while there is a relationship between ADHD and anxiety, there is also an environmental component. One disorder creates situations in the environment that are more likely to lead to the individual developing the other disorder. Look at the link between ADHD and PTSD. Right? That's a rather strong one, isn't it? Not as strong as the link of schizophrenia to mania, but it's there and it's impressive. Uh, why would that be the case? Well, as you know from this channel, people with ADHD as they develop have a very high likelihood of experience accidental injuries, head trauma, and of placing themselves in situations where they're likely to be abused or victimized, all of which can lead to PTSD. And they may be more prone than other people experiencing the same physically traumatic or sexually traumatic event or victimization. They may be more prone to developing PTSD afterwards than someone else exposed to the same event. Uh, and why would that be the case? You know that ADHD is linked to the executive function of poor emotional self-regulation. So it makes it harder for these people to cope with the emotions that they are experiencing or that have been provoked than would be the case with other people. Could also be why there's some link between ADHD and depression that goes beyond just the genetics that are shared between the two disorders. There are environments, ADHD sets up risks for failure, for rejection, difficulties getting through school, holding on to employment, losing friends, losing uh, partners, and so on, uh, because of one's behavior. All of those failures, of course, would feed back to be an environmental contributor to the relationship between ADHD and another disorder, in this case, anxiety and depression, not just PTSD. So there can be environmental reasons for the comorbidity, but there are also shared genetic 
reasons for the comorbidity. So it's a very complicated picture when it comes to understanding why people with ADHD are so prone to having other disorders. But one of those is shared genetics. The other is shared similar environmental causes. And as I've said, the third can be that one disorder sets you up to have experiences that will then feed back to create the other disorder, as in PTSD, for instance. So I hope you found this discussion helpful to you in understanding the answer to this question. It's complicated, but one reason for the comorbidity is shared genetics. So thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you find that the humor uh, is also entertaining as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Please recommend this channel to others uh, who might benefit from the information I'm trying to share here uh, late in my life as I try to pay it forward from all of the work that I and others have done in the field of ADHD. So thanks for joining me everybody and as always, be well.